Felipe Cardenas. Felipe, great to see you, my guy. It's been a while. Hey, it's been it's been too long. I have not been on the morning show forever. It feels like it's it, the time is right, though. We've got a big matchup tonight. And let me say hello to Brian McBride, U.S. men's national team royalty. So what's up, guys? What's up? Legends oh, there you go. Royalty. Royalty. In the house today. I, Felipe, you forgot the legend. <laughs> Felipe, wow. legend I forgot as well. legend. On paper, Mexico should win this game against Panama tonight. What would happen to snap that streak for Mexico against Panama? I mean, the games between these two teams have been tighter and tighter. Uh, you know, and a couple of weeks ago, I sat with both coaches. I, w I was with Jaime Lozano, and I was also with uh, Panama coach uh, Thomas Christensen. And you can tell that these are two coaches that they they are motivators. And I think that's been the difference between uh, you know the, the last cycle with Mexico and under Tata Martino. I think he really struggled to motivate that team and to get that, that get that Mexico team to believe that they are still a regional power. And that's how, that's Lozano's uh, biggest task right now. And for Panama. Panama, you know, it's they are they are a midfield dominant team. When you think about their stars, you think of Coco Carlesquilla, the Dynamo, a Houston Dynamo central midfielder. They are a 3-4-3 team. If they want to defend, they can play in a 4-5-1. And so they are very adept at just leveling the playing field. They very much are a work in progress. And something that Thomas Christensen told me uh, when I spoke with him was like, you know, I know we know the limitations that we have. You know, individually, we're not better than a lot of teams, but collectively, they feel pretty good about um, the the matchups that they're going to face from here on out. And so it is a tight game. You're right. Mexico are the clear favorites. And if Mexico doesn't get through here, you know, again, Jaime Lozano suddenly uh, is going to feel the wrath of that uh, Mexican uh, press and back home. Felipe, so I've spoken to some of my uh, Mexican colleagues and they tell me within Mexico that they don't see themselves as the favorite, but they're expected to win this competition. How much pressure is on Mexico? And in your opinion also, is this the strongest squad that they've brought in the Nations League competition so far? Well, first of all, they're not the favorites, like collectively, like to win the whole thing, because the United States are the two sign defending Nations League champions. So like right there, like you just can't argue against that. And, and you know, I was talking to some of my colleagues, like if, if the final were to be the U.S. against Mexico, would we be surprised if the U.S. won again? You know, would that be a huge upset like it was over the last two years? Uh, so Mexico is in a weird spot because, yes, they are still a regional power, but they're not considered the favorites in this final four. And there would be a lot of pressure on, on Jaime Lozano. He knows it. That's the one thing he told me. He said, I know the pressure is always going to be here. I, I talked to him about the press. He said, I only read what I want to read. I don't read too much because it's not convenient for me. Uh, but they're going to be after him. I think right now he's very well liked, though, because he is a Mexican, former Mexican international. That's what everybody was pleading for, uh, to have a Mexican coach. And so they've gotten that. And I like him. I think he's he's a very well-spoken, very studious manager. Uh, and I think they're going to do well. But as far as the, the squad that he brought, yes, it's the same squad. It's the strongest squad possible. And that's that is another big storyline because Mexico has struggled to move past that core group that went to the 2022 World Cup. Uh, you know, Memo Ochoa is still expected to start in goal, and that back line is going to look very similar to the team that was that helped qualify Mexico to the World Cup in 2022. And so, is that the strongest team Mexico has? I think it is. And then up top, we're going to wonder like who starts at the number nine? Is it Santi Jimenez, who everyone thinks is going to be the next star, or does Lozano again rely on his veteran players like Henry Martin? Team who is still scoring goals with Club America and is very much a leader. So an interesting dilemma for Lozano to see who he starts both in the back line and up top. If they don't play Santi, he's a maniac. <laughs> I mean, this is ridiculous. <laughs> this guy's scoring at will in Europe. In fact, I want to talk a little bit about how Mexico seems to be going through this uh, period right now where it feels like they need to come together a little bit more and it feels like maybe they want to move past some of the more rough, uh, you know, uh, situations that have happened in the past. In particular, be a bit more mature, and I think we've seen a little bit of lack of that recently in the media, with Chucky Lozano coming out and saying some things about Tata Martino, and Edson Alvarez seemingly intimating that Tata Martino maybe didn't want to put out the strongest side against his former his home nation of Argentina, which is a massive, massive thing to say. Talk to me a little bit about how that maybe is not the distraction that Jimmy Lozano wants right now, and do you think that this is going to affect the team? Yeah, I think from this, from if you pull back on that, it, it's two players that 
are, are a bit disgruntled. And, and again, Ed, Edson Alvarez in 2022 wasn't the West Ham United Edson Alvarez, wasn't the icon that he became at Ajax. He was still developing in, into that role. And Mexico-Argentina, that, that match has always been very controversial even before they played it. In Mexico, you know, all the hate towards Tata Martino was like, he's not going to even try to win that game. And then on the flip side in Argentina, and I was there at that game, I was in the mix zone when, when Leo Messi came down, he, he eventually scored the, 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 the first goal to really open up that game for them. And Messi, the first thing he said was like, this is the hardest game that we have played. You know, Tata Martino and his tactics, they they surprised us. I later spoke with Lionel Scaloni in, in Miami. He said the same thing. We were shocked by the way that they played. They really troubled us. And so, you know, which one is it? Like, it's it's difficult there to, to decide which, which, which route you want to take. But, you know, I, I'm not surprised to see some players finally coming out publicly and perhaps saying that they weren't happy under Martino. I've spoken to some players. I mentioned Henry Martin. I spoke to him in Qatar as well. He was almost in tears when he spoke of the influence that Tata Martino had on him. And so I think it's pretty standard. You know, not every coach is going to be beloved in, in that locker room. But to your point about maturity, you know, that was something that the staff, the previous staff, Martino's staff, they really struggled with that, with getting this team to be more professional, to understand who they were representing. And then the pressure came on them and they crumbled. And so Jaime Lozano has a big task, Alexis, to, to get this, to, to, to drown out the noise, because that's always what, what deters the project in Mexico, and to get the team to just believe that, you know, we are the Mexican national team. This is what, this is, we're going to live and die on every play. That's what he told me. We need to give our life in every play. And we're going to see if if that's the case, t you know, tonight. And if it's not, if we see some more of the, the head down and the body language, then we know that this is more of a cultural problem with this generation of player. Hey, Felipe, you touched on Santi Jimenez, and without Raul Jimenez, he has to be the man, doesn't he? I mean, 21 goals and 25 games in, in Eredivisie. If it's not him, then who would it be? It's Henry Martin. You know, I, I mentioned it before. He is a guy that has been so hard to move out of that starting 11. Tata Martino really depended on him as well. And, and again, Martino was was really uh, criticized for not taking Santi Jimenez to the World Cup. And, and at the time, again, Santi Jimenez was not the player he is today. He really struggled in that system. And and, and again, the, the, the system, the nine, even under Lozano, the number nine with Mexico is a player that I think he wants to, he wants that player to be in pockets, playing, turning, letting the wingers run off of him, letting the midfielders run off of him. And Santi Jimenez is very much, you know, he's the guy. He's going to goal. He's expecting service. He's getting into the box. Uh, and so that's a different look for them. Um, listen, if you were to ask me, would I start Santi Jimenez? I would. I would. And, and now, and I and I know Henry Martin well. I've spoken with him. I've seen him play, and I know what he brings to the table. Uh, and and a lot of times, you know, Brian, you may know this better than anyone. Coaches are going to lean on the guys that they really trust. That they truly trust. That they that they know, understand that the pressures of this game and that's why Martin could get the call but Santi Jimenez eventually will be the star of this team but he's going to have to wait you know he's not the automatic starter right now I know that's a shock but that's that's the reality Felipe just before we let you go um, we've got to show a bit more love to Panama in my opinion are we underestimating Panama too much what's their are you talk, spoke about the midfield being their strong points any players we should look out for when it comes to this Panama team in particular well, I'll tell you what, I mentioned Coco Carrasquilla, you know, he's the man, he's a player that I think even European scouts are looking at, and he's a very elegant ball controlling number eight. He can get up and down the pitch, and he really does make that team a lot more progressive. I think under Thomas Christensen, that what's interesting about Panama is they've always had the physicality and the technique, uh, the strong technique individually. I think now they are a smarter team, and when you watch them play, they want the ball. They want to play through you. They want to play through that midfield. And in a 3-4-3, they have wingers uh, that, that really get up and down the field. They also are just over the over the years are, are used to having to defend and, and play against teams that are better than them or more attacking attack focus. And so they're used to this type of pressure. I think, are they being overlooked? You know, that's a question I asked Thomas Christians, Christians. Like, when do you go from being a darling to a dark horse? When are you, are you still a spoiler? Or are you a contender? And that's that's the big uh, next step for Panama. Like, can they become that third team in CONCACAF consistently? They've jumped Costa Rica, in my opinion. They thrashed them to get to this point, 6-1 on aggregate to beat Costa Rica and get not only to the Nations League Final Four, but to the Copa America. And so that's why this team is trending up, and that's why they're dangerous, because 
they believe. They believe they can beat anybody. I, I completely agree. And I think you touched on the midfield. Anibal Godoy is the one that controls the pace of that game. He can play quickly. He can hold the ball. He can really be a physical presence in there. So I, I completely agree. Uh, yeah, I, just real quick. It's a yes or, uh, yes or no. Uh, Henry Martin, does he make the U.S. 11? Oh, man. As a, uh, with this current pool, again, it's it's a tactical thing. I would say yes because he is a, he's a legit goal scorer. You think man. He's played at the highest level. Balogun? You just asked him a question. He's I said it. I said he yes or no. He was yes. leading. Well, no. he was now leading. you want to attack him. It was yes or no. On. I I I'll tell you what, Alexis, I, I right now like right now I am not a huge Flo Balogun guy. I'm not a get him into the nine. Like he's my nine. I'm, I just don't think that. Like I think he's a good player. He's going to be very good for the U.S. He's a different type of player, but he's not my preferred nine. Like I I want to I want Pepe to get in there, Ricardo Pepe, and own that spot. And again, I think having a player that's a little bit more uh, involved in the play and with the type of wingers that the U.S. have, like I like a back to nine goal so, or a goal uh, number nine. So okay. that's my guy. I like Henry Martin. I thought you were going to say no Alexis on that one. I like, think you work for Jimmy Lozano. Dude. Alexis, <laughs> <laughs> Alexis is like,